He hit that guy on that bicycle. That was that low. A little before uh, 9 yeah. o'clock this evening, uh, our officers were en route to a uh, suicide in progress call uh, over behind me on North Wayside here. And uh, tragically, uh, while they were traveling down the road, uh, they came across uh, a gentleman riding a bicycle. And unfortunately, you know, they made contact. And, uh, you know, we do have someone who, who's passed away. Uh, that tragic accident right now or the tragic incident right now is under investigation. You know, the uh, district attorney's office is here. We have our uh, vehicular crimes here. Uh, we also have uh, other entities here all uh, conducting the investigation. The investigation is ongoing. And, uh, you know, at this moment, you know, I also like to you know, offer condolences to uh, the person's, you know, family uh, who, who passed away. You know, it is a tragic incident. We're making sure here with our investigation that, you know, policies and so forth were followed to ensure that our officers, uh, again, uh, policies were followed. You know, again, this is a very tragic incident where a citizen uh, was killed. And then, you know, our officers were um, en route to a code two call, uh, which was a suicide in progress. Uh, so at this time, I, I'll take any questioning from you guys. Chief, a priority two call, does that require a response with lights and siren? Priority two call, it can be lights and siren. You know, by policy, they'll have to announce it to let everyone know they're, they're coming in that way. But it does require a rapid response uh, on the code two calls. Well, again, that's that's all under investigation. Now, again, code two calls, you do have to get there quicker than normal. And lights and siren, you know, that is the option uh, of the responding officers if they feel the need. And if they do that, they will announce it to the dispatchers so that the other units will know that that's how they're coming. Is it part of the investigation now to answer the question, would this man on his bicycle have been alerted to this cop car traveling at maybe a higher than the speed limit rate of speed? Had the lights and siren been on, would this man have been alerted to the speeding cop car, or the quickly moving cop car? You know, again, that's that's all going to be under speculation. I, I don't know. I mean, logically, you would see lights coming, but of course, you know, uh, he's he's coming down. He's coming down uh, the intersection where where they cross, and of course, you have the officers coming. And from from what we understand, you know, where the where the cyclists got into the street. You know, there's a stop sign there, and you also had to cross the median to get to where the officers are. That's what I what I do know based on what I'm seeing here. Now, all the other parts about, hey, if he would have seen it, if they would have had such and such on, I don't know, and that would just be mere speculation, and we're, you know, all that's under investigation right now. Does the police department itself have, in, have its own video of the wreck happening? Was there a dash cam in the car? Was the officer's body camera recording? Now, there, there is dash cam recording. You know, actually, a citizen... Uh, had a dash cam recording during that time. So he's offered that to us and we've looked at it. And again, all that's still under investigation. And it does show the officers coming down. It does show him getting to the roadway. Uh, and it does show the tragic accident. Chief, Any question? My understanding that, uh, that the bicyclist was wearing dark clothing, would that have played a factor in the fact that the, the roadway doesn't have, seems pretty dimly lit in the area? Can you talk to both of those? I, 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 I don't know what color clothing he was having. Now, of course, if he had dark color clothing, I do recognize that it is kind of dimly lit out there. It is kind of dark. So at that intersection, if you were wearing dark clothing, you know, that would be a factor as far as, hey, maybe difficulty in seeing you. But however, before getting into the intersection, I'm not, you know, passing judgment or fault on anyone. I'm just saying this is what I see in the intersection. There is a stop sign. Uh, cyclists, bicycles, you know, also have to obey the signs of the roadway and they have to stop. So. Chief, I'm not speaking to this specifically, but talking to people here in this neighborhood tonight, they are upset that this happened, obviously, sure. in their neighborhood, on their street. Their claim here is that they have officers flying up and down Wayside uh, frequently and that this is a problem and tonight it came to light. What's your response to that? Well, I, I can respond to, you know, this street right here, and I was just talking to the officers about it. 
you know, this street here is real close to the Northeast Station, and we have officers going by it all the time. And, you know, I've even patrolled here from time to time. And, you know, I think the speed limit here is 35 or 40. And the officers, unless they're on a call, unless they're on a code one or code two calls, you know, they're obligated to follow the speed limit signs too. If citizens see officers speeding, I mean, you know, you can call us out on that one. You know, we of course enforce traffic laws. So in response to what happened here today, it's very tragic, you know, offer my sympathies and condolences to the family and friends uh, of the deceased. Again, that's all under investigation right now. And then if we find that, hey, if the officers were at fault in any way, such form or fashion, you know, they'll be held accountable also.